What's up? It's Monjo, back for another session of Get Schooled. Are you ready for today's pop quiz? All right, here we go. What is a critical factor for 40 gig network design? A, you should totally rebuild your network when moving to 40 gig. B, no re-engineering of your 10 gig network. Or C, 40 gigawatts is just enough power to the flux capacitor to get you back to the future. Don't know the answer? The gig is up. Sit back, relax, it's time to get schooled. Hi, I'm Dave Morphus here today with Kim Papagas and today's topic, 40 gig optical networking. And I think the first place to start is what's really driving 40 gig in the industry? So Dave, what's driving 40 gig in the industry really is the increase in bandwidth. And what we're seeing is we're seeing an increase in bandwidth being driven effectively by video services, but also internet traffic as well. This increase in bandwidth is being shown in all areas within the telecommunications networks. You know, including the LEX, the MSOs, uh, wireless, and also the enterprise area as well. Um, for our video services, which primarily work over uh, a gigabit uh, uh, system, um, we're also seeing that the requirement for 40 gig is really required for router interconnect, which is primarily the main transport mechanism for video services. Kim, is it important to have 40 gig interfaces or can you just stack multiple 10 gig interfaces? Uh, that's one option is to stack 10 gig, uh, 4 by 10 gig for example. Um, however, t typically uh, it's really not as efficient on router ports as having a single 40 gig interface. So a 40 gig interface really provides the best uh, efficiency and also, uh, you know, in general provides better efficiency in terms of the router ports. So from cost perspective, yeah, there are some challenges ahead to be able to provide uh, you know, a cost-effective means for 40 gig. But as we've seen, uh, probably in the last uh, year or two, we've seen some quite significant reductions in terms of cost. And we also have some, some directions there that will lead to you know, what would be the traditional two and a half times the cost of 10 gig for these services. Kim, there's a lot of uh, 40 gig right now in the long haul transport or ultra long haul transport part of the network. Um, and now we're seeing it being introduced also into the Metro Rotom space. Um, so as it becomes bigger in the Metro Rotom space and throughout the network and 100 gig comes in down the line, is there going to be a place for 40 gig in the network? Is it going to last a while? And then once 100 gig comes down the line, can the two coexist together? Is there a uh, reason for compatibility between the two? 100 gig is something that's kind of really in its laboratory form today. It's not something that's commonly available. Uh, there's no real components for it, and it's not something that we can certainly build and have that commonly available. So 100 gig is in its research phase. We're probably looking at around about a couple of years before 100 gig really becomes a feasibility. But yet on the other hand, we have a lot of bandwidth requirements that are coming down. So 40 gig provides a very nice solution to be able to handle the bandwidth requirements, but also the practical side of actually building 40 gig systems. With 40 gig, we're lending a lot of technology from the long haul and the ultra long haul, and we're making some adjustments and some optimizations and modifications to allow 40 gig to also work in the Metro Rotom space. So 40 gig will provide you know, a very nice technical solution that we, we can use commonly available components today, but in addition to that, it can actually satisfy the bandwidth requirements in the, in the future as well. So the, uh, the driving uh, uh, vision of the product is really to be able to satisfy 40 gig to match our customers' real requirements today, but also you know, investing and, and earmarking 100 gig technologies for the next evolution of bandwidth growth as well. Kim, you talk about uh, some of the learnings that we, we've gotten up until now. Um, how have some of those learnings kind of played into uh, Telab's overall approach towards 40 gig? We've actually learned a lot from the long haul and the ultra long haul uh, space for 40 gig. And what we've done is we've been able to focus on some of the key areas to enable us to deploy 40 gig in the Metro Rotom space. And one area in particular that uh, we spent a lot of time and really focusing on the problem was the modulation scheme. And so what Tal Labs has chosen a modulation scheme for 40 gig that is basically a very good blend between you know, technical feasibility and also being able to satisfy the network requirements. 
You know, at Telabs we understand that there are different modulation schemes that are available. That there's always going to be a trade-off between performance and feasibility and cost. And Telabs has positioned a modulation scheme to allow that to be right within the sweet spot to be able to provide our customers a cost-effective solution that we can actually manufacture and mass deploy as we do 10 gig or two and a half gig today. So the modulation scheme that Telabs is going uh, to market with, or our first release, uh, is going to be a non-return to zero. Uh, and it's a DPSK modula modulation scheme, and it's a non-classic DPSK. And we will continually monitor and take a look at the technology trends and the feasibilities. And if other modulation schemes come along that provide you know, additional benefits and also manufacturability, multi-vendor source, then we have architected in our system the ability to be able to upgrade to those with, you know, with a bare minimum amount of effort or, or pain to the system. So traditionally 40 gigs being tied up as being a somewhat of a uh, luxurious technology that was really only reserved for the long haul space or ultra long haul space. What we would like to do and what we're heading towards is making 40 gig just a common data rate, which is being driven by the market as saying 40 gig just needs to be standard. One initiative that Talib has had is really put together a 40 gig MSA standard. And if we took a look at what 10 gig and the MSA standard did for 10 gig, we're actually repeating that trend uh, for, for 40 gig. Now the advantages of MSA approach is of course we have multi-vendor source for our components. We also help drive the cost down on that and we get away from having somewhat an application specific board and that's particularly critical when we're dealing with the modulation scheme. If we want to change modulation schemes, we can just simply change out the MSA. But of course, Telabs will only do that when it becomes cost effective. We have multiple sources and it really does provide the right solution for our customers. Kim, what makes the Telabs 40 gig solution different than those others out there in the industry? Well, Dave, the driving point of the 40 gig, something that we've been very focused on from day one and is in our design philosophy, is the ability to deploy 40 gig on existing 10 gig engineered and designed networks. And this is very, very important because to deploy a new data rate like 40 gig onto networks that are already uh, in there in service is an important requirement from our customers. So the way Telabs has approached the problem is we've studied the physical requirements, the transmission requirements of 10 gig and the transmission requirements of 40 gig. And the differences between 10 gig and 40 gig in areas such as chromatic dispersion and also PMD has been absorbed on the 40 gig transponder. And so those parameters basically allow you to take 40 gig transponders and really just put them at the endpoints and run across a network that's designed for 10 gig. I think the other key advantage is our size. We actually have a very, very compact, fully integrated 40 gig solution. It's a two slot wide module that plugs into our 7100 OTS and also into our 7100 Nano. And that's very much key because what's happening is our customers bandwidth is increasing but not necessarily the physical space and we also see that the data rates are getting pushed high data rates are getting pushed further and further into the network but they don't necessarily have a lot more space so now what you have is you have a high capacity system with the 40 gig cards in a very space efficient size like the 7100 and the 7100 nano providing a large amount of bandwidth but not taking up any additional space to be able to support that. And that kind of matches the, the traffic patterns and the bandwidth requirements that our customers are seeing. You're done already, but I wanted you to stay just a little bit longer. The correct answer is B. Now, if you missed the answer, you can always download a cheat sheet at inspirethenewlife.com. Come back tomorrow for another quiz. I'll be waiting.